Often people ask us about the difference between fixed step and variable step size in Simulink and the impact on embedded software development. Today I'm in Oldenburg, where our headquarters are located, and I want to talk about this topic with my colleague Tabo. So, Tabo, how would you describe the difference between these two options? Well, these options, they are related to the sample time. And with a fixed step size, the user can manually define how often the states of the model are recalculated. So, um, for instance, every 10 milliseconds. And with a variable step size, this sample time can change during the simulation. So there must be some sort of algorithm that dynamically determines this while the simulation is running. Yeah, and I think the best way to describe it is via the differential coefficient of the signals. So if my signals are staying constant or only change slowly, I don't need to recalculate the values and states too frequently. But in areas where there's a lot of dynamic signals are moving fast, I need to recalculate the variables and states more often to get a good precision. Right, but if I wanted to, I could also get good accuracy by using a very small fixed step size for my whole simulation, right? True, but then this is a question of uh, computation effort. So if your simulation has many time segments where a low update frequency is sufficient, then the variable step size can lead to faster simulations, plus Maybe you don't know what the ideal step size should be for your particular model, so, um, but we also wanted to talk about the impact on embedded software development, right? Yeah, correct. And for embedded software that is auto-generated from Simulink, we only see fixed step sizes. Variable step sizes are not even supported by production code generators like Target Link or Embedded Coder. So for any dynamic behavior, the blocks from the discrete library are used instead of the continuous ones. Right. So, I guess the concept of variable step sizes is hard to realize on an embedded processor with a fixed clock speed and also from a safety point of view, the deterministic nature of the fixed step size approach seems a bit easier to test and validate. Um, so in the end, the step function is called at predefined intervals and schedulers can then be used inside to have maybe certain sub functions called less frequently. Thanks, Markus, and thank you for watching. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and follow us on LinkedIn or YouTube for more videos.